I still can't sleep at night. I still hear her screams. I imagine her lying there on the North and Lowes Bridge. Christmas will never be the same again for me. I was on my way back for my sisters when it happened. It wasn't like that at the beginning. People used to wink at each other when they saw that Nellie was courting. They knew her father would have his guts for garters if he caught her going with a fella from his lodging house. But Alexander wasn't like your typical Butte Street sailor. He didn't go eyeing up the girls outside the House of Blazers or approaching the pimps in the Custom House pub. He was never among the D&Is, the drunken incapables, who paid their £2 fine after a night in the cell. He even bought Nellie a ring. Then people heard him shouting at her. Jealous man he was. Nellie only had to say so much as good evening to one of the lodgers and Alexander would turn on her, accuse her of lingering in one of the rooms when she should have been cleaning. Mind you, her friend Margaret said he wrote her some very passionate letters. And then she turns up with a black eye. Of course her father saw it, threw Bakerless out of the lodging house. You know the rules, Nellie. No mixing business with pleasure. It only brings trouble. I think she was glad of the excuse in the end. She could do nothing without making Alexander mad. He wanted to know who she was putting lipstick on for. Where did she get the money for stockings? He threatened to kill her if she so much as spoke to another man. So, Nellie asked Margaret to go to Maria Street and return his ring and the letters. Well, Margaret wasn't very keen on the idea, but she agreed. She had some trouble finding the right lodging house. So many in that area. Spanish, Maltese, Polish, all nationalities. Tell her to bring the ring herself if she wants to return it. He shouted at her. And the letters. Tell her to meet me on the canal bridge on Christmas night and he slams the door in her face. So, Nell sets out for the North and Lowes Bridge, carrying the letters, making sure the ring will slip easily off her finger. Has to skirt round the vagrants out the side the Salvation Army Hostel, past the all-night cafe next door. The lights in the police station give her courage. Must have been about 7.30 when I reached the bridge couldn't see nothing in the dark, but I could hear her. God have mercy. Seven or eight times he stabbed her, so they say. Severed her spinal cord. Bakerless made a run for it, clutching the knife. But Arthur Moss, one of the police officers, got hold of him and Bakerless admitted what he'd done. Nellie died three days later in hospital. Nineteen years old. At the trial, they tried to say that Bakerless wasn't responsible for his actions at the time of the murder. But the jury took no time at all to find him guilty. And he was hanged in Cardiff Prison on April the 10th. February now. February 1918. And I still can't sleep. I still hear her screams. 